uh, Puff and Edie are back together. Um, for those of you who don't know, Puff was sick for a little while and um, was out of the tank in a quarantine tank for about two weeks, maybe three weeks. Um, and now they are back together and he is doing just fine. He did a, um, a course of antibiotics and he is looking great now. Um, so, but anyway, tonight I want to talk about filtration. And filtration is so, so, so important in a goldfish tank. Um, and in order to understand why filtration is so important, you really need to understand the nitrogen cycle. So if you don't know what the nitrogen cycle is, um, I would suggest going back and looking at my video on the nitrogen cycle. The cycle is basically uh, beneficial bacteria that live in your filter media and they take care of the waste that your fish produce. And goldfish produce a ton of waste. A ton. Ridiculous amount. They're like little water piggies. So filtration is very important in a goldfish tank, um, more so than with other varieties of fish. So the general rule for filtration for goldfish is that you want a filter or filters that um, push out 10 times your tank volume in gallons per, per hour or liters per hour, whichever you do, liters or gallons. So I have here the box from my AquaClear 70, which is that guy right up there. Um, so I just want to show you guys where you're going to find the gallons per hour. You're going to look on the box and as you'll see this says for 40 to 70 gallon aquariums. Mine is a 40 but I also have two filters running on it. This filter, even though the box says for 40 to 70 gallons is not adequate for a 40 gallon aquarium for goldfish. It may be adequate for tropical fish because they produce a lot more, uh, a lot less waste than goldfish on average. Um, but for goldfish, you do not want to go by this rating. This rating is typically um, based on the requirements of tropical fish, not goldfish. So you're going to look down here, and it says it does 300 gallons per hour. So if my tank is 40 gallons, I want. Um, I want 400 gallons per hour of filtration. If your tank is 20 gallons, you want 200 gallons per hour. Same with liters, if, you're, um, if your tank is 150 liters, you want 1,500 liters per hour of filtration. So, that's what you wanna look for there. And um, if you have a larger tank, you probably will need two filters to do the job. And I think that this is actually a good thing because having two filters on your tank um, is kind of a backup system. I really like having two filters because if one fails, I know that I have the other one still going to maintain my cycle. If you only have one filter and it fails while you're not home or whatever, you can lose your cycle and uh, then you'll have to recycle your tank, which is a pain. So. On this tank here, and I have talked about this a little bit before, I have the AquaClear 70 running and I have an Eheim um, canister filter over there, which is down here. And together they do, uh, I think it's 459 gallons per hour. So I'm a little bit over, which is fine. The more filtration, the better, honestly. If you go over the 10 times, it's no big deal. It's actually probably better. So I want to talk a little bit about the different types of filters that there are to choose from. Um, so when you go to your fish store, you're going to see a few different options, actually several different options. It can be quite overwhelming, in fact, to choose a filter. So the first and most common type is the hang on back type of filter. And that's what this aqua clear is. You can see it hangs on the back of the aquarium. And these are commonly referred to as HOBs, hang on back. Um, these are the kind that often come with most aquarium kits that you'll get. And I think that, honestly, I like these. I highly recommend a 
HOB filter, especially for um, people just getting into the hobby. They're super easy to clean and take care of, and they're just good. So you can see in here, there's different types of media. These are ceramic rings. Underneath that is some filter floss, and then even farther beneath that is a sponge. And this tube right here sucks up the water, brings it in through here, through the media to clean it, and then back out into the aquarium. In terms of brands of hang on back filters, I highly recommend the AquaClear filters. They are honestly my favorite, and I can't imagine buying a different type. They are just so, it's reliable, it's quiet, um, it has a huge basket there where you can put different types of media, and it doesn't use cartridges, which is awesome. It comes with all the different type of media that you need without a cartridge. Um, but if you do choose a different type of filter, and it comes with a cartridge, you want to not use that cartridge. And you can refer to my video on how to set up um, your filter without cartridges. It's really easy, it saves money, and it's better for your tank. So go ahead and take a look at that if um, you're in that situation. So the second type of filter is a canister filter. So basically, you'll see that tube right there sucks in the water. It goes through a tube that runs down below my aquarium and it comes in the canister through here. And inside this canister is three big baskets of different types of media. So there's a sponge in there and there's um, that ceramic media that's also in my AquaClear. Um, at some point I'll show you guys how to clean out your filters and um, I'll actually open this up, but I'm not going to do that right now because it's kind of a pain. So water comes in through here, into the canister, it runs through all the media, and then it is cycled back out through this tube, which runs up the side and comes out right there. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but... You can see the water rushing out right there. Um, canisters are really great because they are really big, as you can see. You know, that's the size of you know a really small waste basket. So I can fit a lot more media in this canister filter than I can fit in the AquaClear. Even though the AquaClear has a pretty big media basket, I can fit a ton more in the canister filter. Uh, this is one of the pros to having a canister filter is that you can have a really good stable cycle with a canister filter because you have so much media and so much surface area for your beneficial bacteria that maintain your cycle to grow. The downsides to a canister filter are um, I personally find them more difficult to maintain than my AquaClear, than a hang on back filter. Um, it's kind of a pain to open it up to clean it. Um, it's just not as easy of a setup. It's doable and I love my Eheim. It's an awesome canister. But I do dread opening it up every time I have to clean it. And I dread putting it back together because it's just not as intuitive and simple as the HOV. Um, the other issue with canister filters is that it can be difficult to get enough filtration with canisters alone and this is one of the reasons why I do run the canister as well as the HOV. My AquaClear does 300 gallons per hour for that little thing. This guy does only 159 gallons per hour and this one was much more expensive than my AquaClear. So in terms of gallons per hour you get more bang for your buck in a um, in an HOB as compared to a canister. Canisters tend to be a little bit more expensive and don't generally do as many gallons per hour. Um, it's certainly possible to get enough GPH gallons per hour with um, canister filters alone 
And there's also some thought that you don't need as much GPH with if you're just running canister filters and this is because they do have so much more media in them. You have a better cycle um, with a canister filter. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of consensus on how much output you need with canister filters alone. Um, some people have suggested to me that you should aim for six to eight times your tank volume in gallons per hour if you're running canisters instead of 10 times. Um, but I think it's always good to just go ahead and shoot for the 10 times because with goldfish you really can't have enough filtration. And the other interesting thing about canisters that I've learned is that they don't necessarily when up and running and full of media they don't necessarily put out as much GPH as they are as they claim to. Um, so the you know the box says that this does 159 gallons per hour but once it's actually up running and full of media and full of water it probably does about 20 percent less than that. So that's just something to think about. So um, the other two options for filtration are internal filters which you'll see I don't have one of those because I don't like them but you, you often see them on tropical tanks at least I have seen them on tropical tanks they seem to be pretty um, popular in with tropical fish keepers but you'll see that they will actually just like be inside the aquarium it'll be kind of like a little black box hanging inside the aquarium as opposed to outside of the aquarium like an HOB and I don't really like internal filters for goldfish specifically because for one they take up tank volume in your um, in your tank because they are sitting in your tank they're actually taking up room that could be you know they're taking up some of your water volume in the tank which is just not good goldfish need as much water volume as possible um, the second thing I don't really like about them is that they tend to not hold as much media as an HOB I mean I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule but in general I think an HOB or a canister is just a much better choice for goldfish specifically and then the fourth type of filter uh, filter that you'll see is an under gravel filter and these please do not get an under gravel filter for your goldfish please 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 they're no good um, because they're under the gravel they tend to accumulate a lot of waste they can really be a great breeding place for bad bacteria anaerobic bacteria that can make your fish sick they're just not a good option for goldfish who produce so much waste. Um, so if you're looking into filters for goldfish, I highly recommend either an HOB or a canister filter or some combination of those two. And I think that's about it for filters. Um, if I missed anything, please let me know. If you guys have other things you wanna say, um, let me know. Um, actually, I'm going to say that the Penguin Bio Wheel is something that has also been highly recommended to me in the past. It's not something that I've actually tried yet. I'm curious about them. Um, but those type of filters, it's a type of HOB, but it has a wheel in it. This, um, you know, it's called a Bio Wheel, and it turns as the water comes out the water turns it and it actually is like a really great place to grow beneficial bacteria so that's an interesting option if you are looking at HOBs um, I know there's a few of my so, tongue-tied um, there's a few of my subscribers that highly recommend them so I think those would probably be a good option for you as well um, so yeah, other than that, I think that pretty much covers the basics of filtration. You want 10 times your tank volume and um, you can really never have enough filtration with goldfish because they are dirty.
So if you don't already have a filter, definitely look into getting one. If you don't know about the nitrogen cycle, please look up um, some information on that and watch my video on that. And uh, feel free to comment. And thanks so much for watching.